Good evening, and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday, April 29th. The order of service is found right on the screen, so simply sit back and end your day with God. Let us begin. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory, of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of light, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, for you led your people Israel with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 32. Please chant along the parts in yellow. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, O righteousness, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Our hymn this evening is Baptized into Your Name Most Holy. Please sing along. Baptized into your name most holy, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I claim a place, though weak and lowly, among your saints, your chosen host, buried with Christ and dead to sin. Your spirit now shall live within. My faithful God, you fail me never. Your promise surely will endure. Oh, cast me not away forever, if words and deeds become impure. Have mercy when I come defiled. Forgive, lift up, restore your child. All that I am and love most dearly, 
Receive it all, O Lord, from me. Let me confess my faith sincerely. Help me, your faithful child, to be. Let nothing that I am or own serve any will but yours alone. This evening's scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added to them that day about 3,000 souls. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, it's easy as human beings to know that we are sinners. That's something that we know from when, the time that we were children, when our mother uh, takes us and tells us that we shouldn't have taken that cookie from the cookie jar, or our father takes us and lets us know that we should not have told that lie, or taken that piece of candy, or whatever the case may be. From the time that we are very young, we know that we are sinners. We know that we have fallen short of the expectations that surround us. Now that's easy. That's easy to know that we are sinners, and that's not a very comforting thing. Now we as Christians know that comfort is found in the gospel. Comfort is found in knowing that we are forgiven. But how do we know that? How do we know that we are forgiven? Well, Our scripture reading this evening gives us a good hint at that. In verse 20, in verse 38, we read that Peter said to them, Peter said to all that group that was assembled there, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. So, we know that we are sinners. We know that we stand in the need of a Savior. But how do we know that we are forgiven? Is there a tangible sign that we can know, that we can look at each and every day to know that we are forgiven? Well, yes, there is. God, in his grace, gives us that sign that is as evident and is as obvious and is as tactile as water. We all, especially now, wash our hands each and every day. We're hopefully taking showers every day. I know that if you're not going out, sometimes you just don't even want to do that now. But we all should be using water each and every day. Water is one of the first things that God created. Water is something that we need for life, that sustains life, that nourishes us, that refreshes us, and indeed, that makes us clean. That's what baptism does also. Baptism is a tangible sign that God has given us that our sins are washed away. And that we not only stand forgiven, but that we bear God within ourselves. For in baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit. Now, you can't see it 
right at this minute because the sanctuary is dark. But if you look on one of our Sunday videos, you can see the baptismal font right over there. You can't see it now, I know, but the baptismal font is right there. I moved it up there from where it usually sits under the pulpit so that it can be in full view on Sunday mornings. Baptism is very, very important for us, and it should give us great comfort to know that there was a time and there was a place when if if, if we are in doubt of our forgiveness and if we are in doubt that we have a new life in Christ, We can point to a time and a place where the Holy Spirit came within us, where our sins were washed away. We point to the cross. Yes, certainly, that's where it happened. That's where it's it's happened, but it is made efficacious to us in our baptisms. So when you wash your hands today, I think... uh, I think, what, what did they say? You have to wash your hands now for, you say, sing happy birthday twice, or um, in Britain you'd sing the national anthem, God save the queen a couple of times. Well, we can say the Lord's Prayer a couple of times as Christians when we wash our hands. But when we do wash our hands, when we get our hands wet in that water, remember, take that time, take that moment, take that opportunity to remember your baptisms, to remember the fact that you have been washed clean by a living God and that that God dwells within you. For you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, for your children. We baptize children. We baptize infants. Because the Bible doesn't say you have to have a, you have to be so old or have this much mental capacity to be baptized. The Bible says that this promise is for you and for your children and for all people, all those who are far off. In other words, the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only son that whoever believes in him and believes in what he has done for us will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the great good news of the gospel. And that great good news of the gospel is made efficacious to us, has been put on us in our baptisms where God has put his very name on us, in effect given us new names, marked us as his own, and has promised that he will never, ever, ever let you go. And you can run away from him all you want, but in baptism you have been given the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit, that still small voice, is there calling you back, calling you home, calling you to be back with God. So, This night, remember your baptism. Remember the fact that God has washed your sins away. And whenever you're in doubt of of the fact that you're forgiven, whenever you are in doubt of forgiveness, whenever the sin within you just wants to overwhelm you psychologically, you could remember that you have been baptized into Christ. For we have been baptized into Christ. His name has been put on us. He has promised to never leave us, never abandon us, and he has brought us to peace with God. A peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We now continue with the litany. We have prayed this in this way before. We will sing, Lord, together. And you will continue with Have Mercy. Just follow along on the screen. You should be able to get it pretty well. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Matthew, our synod president, for Alan, our district president, For all pastors in Christ, 
for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, for J.B., our governor, for Lori, our mayor, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, pandemic, and need, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Spare your people, O Lord. Preserve us from this and every illness. Give healing and strength to those who are sick. Protect those who care for them. And grant us steady minds and calm hearts in the face of fear. You have borne our infirmities in this human flesh and purchased us with your own blood. Keep us in the faith and embolden us in love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us at the end of the day, at the end of our life, at the end of the world. Abide with us with your grace and goodness, with your holy word, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the night of affliction and temptation comes upon us, the night of fear and despair, the night when death draws near. Abide with us and with all the faithful, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. So good to have you with us this evening as you end your day with God. Please join us again tomorrow starting at 2 o'clock for our, the continuation of our Bible study on the book of Proverbs. Putting out a call to anyone who sews. As you know, there is a need for masks now in the state of Illinois, and we'd like to give away masks here at church to those in need so we, continue to, so we can continue to reach out even though we can't invite people to worship here in church at this time. So if you sew, just let me know. I can get you some fabric and some patterns that you can uh, sew some masks. So uh, let me know if you're able to, uh, to do that. Um, And also, if you'd like to receive communion privately, individually, or as a household, please give me a call, and I'd be glad to set that up. As I've said, we can do it extremely hygienically, so it is it is safer and it is more hygienic than if you're going to the grocery store or the post office. God be with you and go with you this day and every day. Bye-bye.